Hello, Chip GT here, and I just want to take a quick moment to say Happy New Year to all my pinball wizards out there. Uh, my New Year's resolution? Play more pinball. But that's not what this video is about. We're actually going to address what my biggest complaint was while I was at Pincinnati, uh, and that is the time delay between when the flipper button is pushed to when the flipper actually actuates on the screen. And uh, we're gonna compare that to what the flipper delay is on a real pinball machine. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and coin in and push that start button. When Googling how to reduce flipper delay in a V-pin cabinet, you're gonna come across several articles that talk about two things, your GPU and your refresh rate. Well, I'm gonna set the play field with you real quick and show you my PC specs. And my GPU is a Radeon RX 6700 XT with 12 gigabytes of GDDR6. That GPU is capable of running three different monitors at 144 frames per second in 4K. I'm not doing that. I'm using all three of my monitors are 1080p at 60 frames per second. That is not gonna be the issue for me in having any kind of flipper delay when I push the button. Yes, having a higher refresh rate would allow me to see a few more frames of animation of the flipper actually moving up and down. Yes, it would be much more clear and much more sharp, but it would not drastically reduce the delay that I'm experiencing. In reality, a lot of different things come into this between your CPU and your RAM, whether or not you're using an SSD or a spinning hard drive, that all comes into play too. Um, for example, processors with more cores can handle more tasks concurrently. With our pinball software, we're running a lot more software and a lot of different things are running in the background. If you have configured RAM as dual channel or having two sticks of RAM in your PC at the same time, this allows access to two different modules simultaneously, doubling the transfer rate and boosting memory bandwidth. Modern software generally benefits from having a higher speed uh, transfer rate for your RAM and having a higher bandwidth. So that is why I have two sticks of 64 gigabyte DDR4 and they're both operating at uh, 3600. I made this little diagram to kind of help explain uh, everything that's going on in my V-pin. So the button is pushed, it comes down to the relay board from here it triggers a switch to fire the solenoid and it also carries over and goes over to the pin skateboard where the button press being pushed is converted into being a keyboard input. From the pin skateboard, it goes over USB 2.0 into the computer. On the inside of the computer, the USB is controlled by a USB controller, which connects to the PCIe bus controller, which talks to the GPU, which stores the information into RAM that is then read from the CPU, goes back to the bus controller, to the GPU, and then finally we see a flipper move. So this, all this, this whole process of what is what causes us to have a little bit longer delay than a normal pinball machine. And if you don't believe me, this is how simple the normal pinball machine is. Um, there is still a relay board and this, this controls several different things. And yes, it may go up to a computer, but when it comes to actually flipping a solenoid, all they do is they, it just, you push the button, it goes down to the relay board, which fires the solenoid. It, the solenoid moves this way, the linkage moves down, and it moves the flipper. So a lot less going on here. And uh, normal pinball machines don't really need to have any kind of input from a, com like from a computer that says, hey, you know, the button was pushed, send the signal out. It's almost instant. So this is like the fastest case scenario where you're only limited to the speed at which electricity flows through the relay board down to the solenoid. Now, I did a month long project of trying to figure out all the different ways that I can reduce any kind of delay that I'm having with my flippers. And first I need to set a benchmark here. Even real pinball machines have a delay. There is no such thing as instant on. It's just so small, the delay is so small, you can't see it with your eye. It's about 10 to 30 milliseconds or 0.01 to 0.03 seconds. Virtual machines and virtual software have a little more going on and any of the following can really cause you to have any like 
a delay of any kind in your system. Um, first, we'll start off with your hardware performance. We already talked about you know, the GPU, the memory, the CPU, and all that. If you don't have your system tweaked, um, like really tuned and tweaked, then yeah, that's gonna cause some delays. And But that's not always the number one issue when it comes to that. You also need to consider your device drivers and the quality and the efficiencies of the device drivers can really affect the speeds at which the input is processed. Um, I regularly check to make sure that my OS is updated. I have, um, I have AMD motherboards, I have AMD CPU, AMD GPU. I make sure that that is updated. Uh, on a regular basis. And then I also make sure that the pin skateboard that I'm using has the latest and greatest drivers that it can have as well. All three of those can greatly influence the transfer rate of information going between the uh, external boards and the internal boards. And it's important that you have the latest and greatest drivers. And that directly plays into your input and output latency your input and output latency is kind of determined by what USB type that you're using. Um, the Pinscape board uses the USB 2.0, which is about uh, 480 megabits per second, which when you're transferring that kind of information, you're looking at 0 0.002 seconds. With USB 3.0, that's five gigabits per second, and that is 0 0.0002 seconds transfer speed. So. That's why a lot of the pin skate boards are being phased out in favor of the new boards. The new boards use USB 3.0. The pin skate board uses USB 2.0. Um, I still recommend the pin skate board if you have it. I haven't changed mine out and I don't plan to. I'm, I'm okay with that kind of a delay when it comes to that. Um, so when you're looking at those three different things, like, like me, and you're like, okay, those clearly cannot be an issue. The hardware, the drivers, the input, it really comes down to how is your operating system performing and what application software are you using? So with that, you have to think, how does Jersey Jack and Stern and American Pinball and some of the other guys, when they're using their OS, they're using a very custom trimmed down version of whatever operating system they are using to make it so that the pinball software operates as it's supposed to with a limited OS. Like they're not throwing in social media, they're not throwing in all kinds of extra features. That OS is custom built to only run the pinball cabinet. So if you are using your personal PC and you do more things than just pinball on your personal PC, you may experience a delay just because you have several different things that are all operating in the background. So what I recommend to help reduce that is to have two different hard drives and have a dual boot system. What I mean is have one hard drive that you use on your regular basis for your PC and the second one um, be configured for dual boot and only operate your pinball machine or your pinball software. That way you're getting the fastest speeds. It's, it's custom tailor made to whatever you need. Um, you can even partition your hard drive and have two different, you know, spots where you have your main hard drive and then your pinball hard drive. Um, but making it so that your pinball software is only operating with what it needs and not having a whole bunch of extra features and bloatware and everything that you don't necessarily need to run pinball is key. And that's why I put in my cabinet a custom build PC. It only has what it needs to run the pinball software and nothing else. Um, which finally brings me to what the actual issue that I had was, and that was the application software. The quality and the efficiency of different devices and how they um, react to inputs and processing, that is what I'm talking about when it comes to application software. VPX 10.7 versus 10.8, there was a whole bunch of enhancements made for the input delays and spoiler alert, this was my issue. Uh, I was running VPX 10.7, not VPX 10.8 when I was at Pincinnati. Now I have installed 10.8 on here and I'm gonna go into that here in a minute. But I just wanted to say that if you are experiencing any kind of delay, first check your hardware, check your device drivers, make sure that your input and output latency is, is within spec. Um, 
and make sure that your operating system is not there's not a million things going on in the background in your operating system before you check your application software but i will say um, having i'm using beta number five for vpx 10.8 with that i'm going to show you what my issue actually was okay so here's the issue i'm running vpx 10.7 right now and down here on the relay board you're going to see a little light come on whenever i push in on the flipper this light is almost instant and then from here it goes down to the pin skateboard and then also on the other side of this board from the other side of the relay it comes over and it fires a solenoid so when i push the button in see how that lights up almost instantly and you can hear this and it almost sounds instant well compare that light to the flipper moving and you can see there's a little bit of a delay so it's not as instant as it seems okay so to figure out how much of a delay that actually is and be able to compare it to a real pinball machine. I'm going to use my phone, which is a Galaxy S23, and I'm going to use the slow motion feature in the camera. And what that does is it captures everything at a frame rate of 290 frames per second. So what we'll do is using the DaVinci Resolve software, which is the editor I actually use on my computer, um, that has a feature where we can count the frames as they go by and I'll just mark this is when the light comes on and this is when I see the flipper move and then divide that by 290 to figure out what our actual uh, second delay is. Okay, now I'm running VPX 10.8 beta number five with the enhancement for the uh, input. So you'll see when I have the, the light come on, this is almost instant. Almost instant, okay? Now we're gonna flip it into slow-mo so we can see it again. Okay, so here's our results. Keep in mind that the benchmark that we're shooting for is 0 0.03. Um, and in the 10.7 software, we are hitting 0 0.06. And in uh, the 10.8 beta number five, the average was pretty close to uh, 0 0.04 to 0 0.05. Um, this is much better than 10.7 and as the software continues to develop, there's going to be more ways in which the software is tweaked and optimized to help reduce this delay even more. Right now, the issue that we all seem to have with, uh, with VPX and flipper delay is it's all application based. So as the software continues to get better and better and better, we're going to see these numbers come down more and more and more. And I just want to show you real quick this, um, this comparison between VPX 7 and uh, 10.8 beta 5. So I have 10.7 on the left, 10.8 beta 5 on the right. And in both pieces of this, I have the video graphics settings up. And you'll notice that in 10.8, there is a new setting for input physics and video synchronization. It's called frame pacing. It's designed to target real-time simulation with low input and video latency. And when running this, this is what is causing the difference in the um, latency for the processing of the software. So for now, it's just a waiting game and hopefully this will get better with future releases. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from this. If you did, please give me a like, please subscribe. It really does help make the channel grow. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.